All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem calculating design moment strength of this funky I-shaped section, which has a flange at the top that's 12 by four, a web that's 22 by four, and then this bottom flange is essentially a 12 by six. And we have here, this thing is reinforced with three number 10 bars on the tension side. So we're gonna assume that there's an applied moment that causes compression at the top. And what we wanna do in this problem is we wanna calculate the design moment strength of this cross section, phi m n, knowing that the concrete compressive strength is 4 KSI and we have grade 60 steel. A special shout out to my man Jesus at UC Davis. What's up baller? Make sure you subscribe, like, and share this video. So the first thing I like to do whenever I'm analyzing a reinforced concrete beam section is to actually draw the strain and stress profile so I can visualize the section. Now to begin with the strain profile, what I do know is that the strain in compression here at the very top of my beam, compressive strain is gonna reach this ultimate strain, which we're using as 0.003, according to the ACI code. So this is when we're gonna say the concrete crushes. Now I could draw a straight line here, but what I don't know is where is the neutral axis gonna be for this cross section? It could be the issue that I have is that I don't know if it's in the web of the beam, which is this portion right here, this four by 22 area, or is it in the flange? Because that's gonna affect my calculations for the compression force resultant. So I'm, I'm gonna hold off on drawing this line here. The other thing I, you know, that I'd like to do is I don't know what my compression area is because if my, if the depth of the equivalent stress block is here in the flange, then I have a nice simple rectangle for my compression zone. But if it's here in the web, then I have this T shape, which is going to affect where the force resultant is. But in any case, I do know that there is going to be a compression force resultant due to the concrete. And I know where, that where the steel is, there is going to be a stress associated with the steel. And there is going to be a tension force resultant, which I'll call TS. So I can't really complete the drawing until I know where it is. So what I, I really need to do right now is locate where the neutral axis is of this cross section. And this whole problem in a nutshell is trying to find the theoretical moment associated with this cross section reaching a compressive strain of 0.003. And so locating the CNA, in order to do that, I'm gonna apply force equilibrium of my section. Some of the forces equal zero, I'll call it positive to the right. And essentially what that's gonna result is TS equals CC. And I'm gonna say that this, the force in the steel, I can break it up as AS, FS and this will be 0.85 FC prime times the area in compression here. I'm going to make an assumption that steel yields, that the tension reinforcement yields. And so what that means is that my stress or my strain in the steel is greater than or equal to epsilon y. And that means the stress in the steel is going to be equal to Fy. And so with that substitution, I could say that AS Fy is 0.85 FC prime AC. And now I can say the compression area that I need, AC, is equal to, and I can go ahead and plug in numbers here. So the area of steel is three number 10 bars. Right here, I have three number 10 bars. And if you don't know, well, now you know, the area of a number 10 bar is 1.27 inches squared. And this is a fun one to memorize. You don't have to memorize the areas of these bars, but the area of a number 10 bar is 1.27 inches squared. And the diameter of a number 10 bar is also 1.27, but in units of inches. So that's a, that's a fun bar to know. All right, so that's the area of a number 10 bar. I have three of those. So this would be three times 1.27 inches squared. The yield strength of steel, because I have grade 60 steel, is 60 KSI, and I'm divided by 
times four KSI. And when I solve this out, I will get, I need a compression area of 67.2 inches squared. So looking at, this is the area I need. So essentially what I have to do for my equivalent stress block, I have to keep going down until I reach an area of 67.2 inches squared. And if you look here, this area right here of the flange is 48 inches squared and this a flange the area of the flange is 48 inches squared and here this compression area that i need is more than that therefore my equivalent stress block is going to be in the web this a is the depth of the equivalent stress block is going to be greater than four inches it's going to go outside of the flange and into the web a is greater than four inches all right so shoot if i have a is in the web that means my depth of the equivalent stress block is going to be somewhere down here. My A value, this is the area that will be in compression here. And I, I need to find out what that A is. I would like my area in compression to equal 67.2 inches squared, which is equal to the area of the flange, which is right here. This is that 48 inches squared plus this area right here this area right here, which has a height here of A minus four inches and a width of four inches. And so I would say here, this rectangle is four inches times A minus four inches right here. I know the area of the flange is 48 inches squared. And so I can just use this equation right here to solve for A. And this will tell me that A is equal to, and then put A in red, A is equal to 8.8 .8 inches. So this is my depth of the equivalent stress block. I feel good about that. I could even go ahead, this 8.8 .8 inches, maybe it's not exactly the scale, but A, you're not judging me. And this equivalent stress block has an intensity of 0.85 FC prime here. It's going to have a now I can solve for the neutral axis depth. And here I know that my equivalent stress block, A, is beta 1 times CNA. Here, beta 1 is 0.85. So CNA is 8.8 .8 inches divided by 0.85. And this is going to give me 10.35 inches. That is the depth of the, of the neutral axis. So somewhere probably down here is where my neutral axis line is. And I can draw this horizontal line here. And my strain is linear. Yes. Now my strain profile becomes a little bit clearer. This is CNA. This is that 10.35 inches that we just calculated. This right here is A, the depth of the equivalent stress block we just calculated, that 8.8 .8 inches. And we have a strain in the steel epsilon S. And we have to go back and verify our assumption. And to verify the assumption, you have a lot of choices here. Uh, you could look at the ratio of C over D. You could look at just the strain in the steel. So one of the most common ways is to just quickly calculate the strain in the steel by similar triangles or by ratios. Here, epsilon Cu versus CNA. O verse is equal to the ratio of epsilon S and this distance right here, which we could call D minus CNA, the depth to steel minus that CNA. So by similar triangles, essentially what we have is epsilon Cu over CNA is equal to epsilon s over d minus cna and if i go through and i solve this out i just and d in this case the depth to steel from the extreme compression fiber is 4 plus 22 plus 3 which is 29 inches 29 inches minus cna minus cna which is 10.35 inches divided by 10.35 inches times 0 0.003 and 0 0.054. First, this is definitely yielded. This is greater than epsilon y, which for grade 60 steel is 0 0.00207. What's even more is that this 0 0.0054 is also, this epsilon s is greater than 0 0.005, 
which is our tension control limit. And so we have a tension controlled beam or cross section here. And that means since we have a tension control beam, we can use a strength reduction factor, a phi value of 0.9 when we calculate our design moment strength. Yay! Now there's also another way that you could, so if you, if we, you know, let's, let's just think about this for a little bit right here. Okay, so here, according to our American Concrete Institute, the strength reduction factor looks like this, especially for beams in flexure right here. We have here this phi, this epsilon T, which is the extreme tensile fiber. So it would be the very most tensile layer of steel, if you will. But in this case, there's only a single layer of steel. And that's why we can, epsilon T is the same as epsilon S in this case. In any case, this diagram looks like this. We have this, this 0.9. And we look and we say that here, the ACR code says here, this 0.005, this value here, in this zone right here, this is the tension controlled zone. Tension controlled, tension controlled. And that's when at ultimate, my strains in my steel are greater than 0.05 and I can use a phi value of 0.9. This in between is a transition zone. This right here, Epsilon YT is the yield strain in the steel, or in the, usually it's around 0.002, and this region is compression controlled. And for our beams, our reinforced concrete beams, what we would like is to always be in this tension control zone, even though technically speaking, we are allowed, we might be allowed to go to 0.004, all right? But uh, we won't get there. It's just nicer to get to 0 0.005 and be able to use a strength reduction factor of 0 0.9 because then you're using the most you're legally allowed by the code. You're using most of the theoretical strength as much as you can. Now, another way that this is also expressed, instead of calculating strengths, you could just look at the C over D ratio or this CNA over D ratio. And again, in this case, this is, the CNA is 10.35 divided by D, which is 29 inches. So this C over D ratio is 0.356, and we can use that. So you probably had a discussion in your reinforced concrete class about how this strength reduction factor could actually be, you could plot another axis down here instead of the strain axis, and this would represent a C and A over D T ratio. And the tension control limit is over here. This is 3 eighths or 0.375. And here for, a great, for this 0 0.002, this corresponds to a C over D ratio of 0 0.6. And obviously this can't go down to zero, but here, as long as my CNA over DT is less than 0 0.375 or less than or equal to 0 0.375, this, would be considered tension controlled. And so this number is less than 0.375, therefore tension controlled. Oh, I wonder if there are questions about why is it 0.375 and 0.6, i.e. that's gonna require another video about what the, the relationship between the strength reduction factor, reinforcement ratios, strain values, and this C over D. But for this problem, I think this is good enough. And so here, because again, we know that it's tension controlled, phi is 0.9, and if it's tension controlled, we also know that our assumption that steel yielded is good. All right, and so now that we know that steel has yielded, boom, right here, we calculated and verified this 8.8 .8 inches and the CNA, we even determined the strength reduction factor, and now we have to determine the nominal moment strength and then calculate the design moment strength. And so that's gonna require this distance right here, which is the moment arm between the compression force resultant and the tension force resultant. And this is usually D minus Y bar. And Y bar can be taken as a centroid of that compression block. Yes, from the top of the beam or from the extreme compression fiber here to calculate our nominal moment. I could do some of the moments about the compression force resultant equals zero. So what do I mean by that? So here, so here, if I'm looking at, at my, 
my strain and stress profiles, what I have here is I'm looking for the moment associated with this force couple, this TS and CC. So this right here, I, I could throw in this MN. There's gonna be this MN associated with the cross section in terms of the materials and the geometry. And then I have this MU, which is the applied moment. Okay, and so here, if I take moments about the compression force resultant, which is right about here, I would get, I would get, let's see, I would have negative MN plus TS times Z equals zero. And that just tells me MN equals TS times Z, which is equal to ASFY times d minus y bar. So I know all of those things except for the location of this compression force resultant, which I will put in a blue dot, right? I'm sure it's somewhere around here, okay? I don't know exactly where, but it's somewhere around there, right? Maybe a little bit higher, who knows, okay? But I gotta figure it out, okay? I gotta figure out where is that location for that blue dot, and so I have to do my first moment of area calculations on this red zone, this compression force area, and I'm gonna call this area one, is area one, and I'm gonna call this area two, right there, and I'm gonna choose this as my reference. And so, by first moment of area, y bar is the sum of ai yi over the sum of ai. And so this first element is the flange area, so I'll call this a1 y1 plus a2 y2 over the total area a1 plus a2. Shoot, this first area is 12 by 4, which is the flange area, 48 inches squared, and the centroid of area one is right here is two inches from this reference so times two inches plus area two which is down here and it has a width of four inches and a height of oh i don't think you can see that but this height right here was a minus four and that would just be 8.8 inches minus four inches and the location of the centroid of area two is if you can imagine four inches plus half of a minus four so here this is four inches plus 8.8 .8 inches minus four inches divided by two. Yes, and divided by the total area, which, which is really the total area is the area of the compression area or compression zone. So this is 67.2 inches squared. And when I go through and I solve this out, I will get Y bar is 3.26 inches. And that's the location of that compression force resultant here. And now to calculate MN, it would be three times 1.27 inches squared, three number six, three number 10 bars times 60 KSI times D, which in this case was 29 minus 3.26 inches. And this would give me my nominal moment of 5584.2 five kip inch and if i want to convert that into kip feet it would be divided by 12 and this would be 490.3 kip feet and then the design moment strength last but not least boom fee mn i just multiply by the strength reduction factor is 441.3 kip feet Alrighty, hopefully that was a useful video on calculating design moment strength of a funky shape or at least in this something like an I-shaped reinforced concrete beam. If you have any questions, put some comments down below, subscribe, like, share, you know, do your thing, structure free.